Good morning, show, ladies and gentlemen. It's just about, what time is it? 17 minutes after 6 o'clock. I hope you're having your first cup of coffee by now, or at least tea, or some <laughs> kind of thing to get your morning started. How do you usually start your day, Kimberly? I am a tea person, you know. I am, um, I am very British and very English, and so I love to have my tea in the morning. That is what gets me going on in the morning. I'm not an espresso girl. I'm not a coffee girl. Give me a cup of tea. Um, my favorites, uh, I love chai. I mm -hmm. love green tea. And I also love chamomile. So I have my cup of tea in the morning and I'm good to go. How mm -hmm. do you start your day, Natasha? Hot water. Hot water? Yeah, mm. nice a cup of hot water. Just no a, flavor at all in it? Nothing. Just plain hot water. And then I throw on my gym clothes and I'm out the door. Now, Natasha, I realize you're very slim. Is, 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 this, is the hot water the secret of <laughs> melting <laughs> away the fat? I don't know. Please tell me. I, since the pandemic, I've been hooked on to Korean dramas. And this ah, is what these Koreans do. Okay. And they all look so good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to adopt that one. And I'm working for me too. <laughs> yes, yes. I've heard good yes. things about the hot water and the lemon. Lemon, um, yeah. And so I know if you squeeze a little bit of lemon and into it, supposedly yeah. it's supposed to help with the metabolism and help you to stay slim yeah. and trim. Yeah. So well, I, I think know, I'm going to that. I know that they say the first thing you should start your day with at all times is a glass of water. Yes, of course. Um, yeah. Preferably room temperature, but I guess... Hot. Um, I guess warm could work too. Yeah. Hot could work no, too. Hot. Yeah. Hot. yeah. And uh, you know, speaking of hot water, over the last few days, we had some people <laughs> who ended up in some hot water. <laughs> just as a result of, <laughs> you know, the nice weather. <laughs> Just as a result of the weather that we, we experienced, uh, were we prepared for it? We should have been because the ODPM tried to prepare us since back in May. Mm -hmm. But we don't listen. So this morning, let's chat with uh, the Senior disaster, disaster Management Coordinator of the Local Government and Rural Development. We're going to be chatting about that inside your spotlight on now. Good morning to you, Mr. Jerry David. Welcome to the No Morning Show. Hi, morning, sir. How are you doing this morning? I'm always better than those who are worse than me. I love that line. I can't tell a lie, you know. Every time you say it, I, I enjoy hearing you say it. So explain to us what happened uh, over the, the last few days of last week. So let's say Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we had some heavy winds. We had lots of flash flooding. Tell us what, what went down. Well, most of it took place on a Thursday, Thursday night into Friday. And mm -hmm. that's when the tropical wave passed uh, over most of Trinidad. And uh, the hydrometeorological hazard, that is, high winds took place. And um, as of yesterday, we had uh, 482 roads that were either blown off completely or partially blown off and 110 trees that fell on homes, well, that fell on the streets, fell on homes, it fell in parks, it fell in squares, that's about 110 trees. So it was pretty uh, menacing, huh? Hmm. And it, from my understanding, that wind only lasted 15 minutes? Yes, just about 15 minutes. Uh, just about 15 minutes, and uh, it shows the state of the housing stock in Trinidad that I have lamented for years mm -hmm. and that the care that is necessary to secure roofs on homes uh, is not very robust and uh, there, there, there needs to be immediate action by citizens to ensure that their roofs are secured onto their homes this is the protection for your family this is what you uh, uh, you must secure and this is your responsibility uh, to ensure that your family is safe. Now, Mr. David, when you say secure your roof, right, I assumed, I just automatically assume that if you have galvanized on top of your house, it nailed on, right? Is that not enough? What, what type of security do we need on roofs to make sure that we are as safe as possible? Okay. Now, if, if you have a, a wooden home, and there are many of the homes that were uh, impacted on Thursday night, Many of them were wooden homes, and also quite a few of them were, 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 were concrete homes. Now, if it's a wooden home, then you must secure the four corners of the house first. And then when you are, when you are installing the roof, you have to ensure that, they, that there is a proper wall plate. The wall plate is what you, uh, uh, you, you will nail the rafters on so that then you will put on the galvan, the, the, the galvanized sheetings. 
So when you have the, a, a steady and proper wall plate, then you would have the rafters, and then you would use hurricane straps to make sure that the rafters are held um, securely to the wall plate. It's, it's, it's not a lot of rocket science, but it, is, it does require some, 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 some thought, and it requires uh, some diligence in preparing the roof so that the, the galvanized sheeting can, can go on securely. If it's a concrete house, then you must put a concrete ring beam. Of course, you secure the four corners of the home, and you put a concrete ring beam so that, again, when you're putting in the, the, the superstructure of, of the frame onto the, onto the home, then you, you, you will secure the roof into that, um, into that ring, ring beam, beam mm -hmm. securely so that at least it will be firm and uh, resistant to wind. But quite a few people not, are not doing that. They are just resting the structure of the roof onto the, 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 the structure of the house or, or the framing of the house. And uh, we, we have, we, you would have seen that entire roofs, that's the entire structure of the roof, just blew up and fell to the ground. And then in some cases, the galvanized sheeting came off. And those that um, peeled like a Portugal, that, that, that happened, and then the whole structure of the roof fell to the ground. So there needs to be serious uh, efforts put in place to secure roofs in Trinidad. 15 minutes of, 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 of wind caused this. Now, if we multiply that by, uh, we say, 15 by 4, that's an hour, a 15 minutes produced uh, almost 500 yeah. roofs being impacted. Hey, take an hour or two, and you would see what I'm talking about, what, what I'm speaking to now. And these, these 482 roofs that were blown off, they were all over the country, or were they isolated to, to one particular all area? Over, all over the country. Sandy Grandi had over 70. Um, you, you, you had areas in, in Cuba, Tabaki, Palparo, they had almost 96. You had um, Shogunas in the Shogunas Borough Corporation, and that municipal corporation that is Shogunas, you had almost 40. Yes, all over the country, all in, uh, even my area, Rio Claro, you had upwards of 40 homes where the roofs were, um, the, 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 the roofs were blown off or partially blown off. We need to do something about how we secure our roofs. Now, Mr. David, uh, is, is, there, is there a situation set up where town and country has that as part of what are the requirements to get approval for housing and for building structures? You know, I, I anticipated that question. Huh? Many of the homes that um, you see that were impacted, they don't need tongue and country approval to construct, you know. You know, a person will go into a community, they will um, use their savings, mm -hmm. they will go to their credit union, they will get their monies, and they will construct a home. And... Um, it's when you have to get tongue and country approval, it's when you have to, when you're doing stuff with the bank and you have to get a mortgage and you have that sort of thing. Right. Now, when you come to the regional corporation, the regional corporation gets the documents from tongue and country when, uh, when a person is seeking for approval from the regional corporation. But people who build homes in communities, because that's where they traditionally live, their family live there, and uh, they, 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 there is no requirement for that. However, there is a requirement for them to get T and tech. If you have to get electricity, electricity in your home, you have to get, you have to get the electrical inspectorate to pass that house as safe. Yes. Right. Before they give you an electrical connection from T and tech. If I think WASA is the same. If you have to get, uh, um. To a connection, or you have yeah. to get some other. You have to go to Wasa. Um, perhaps I don't know. If we have to help the, our countrymen save themselves, we may have to say, okay. Uh, if you, if your roof is not secured, we must have some kind of oversight on these things now. If your roof is not secure, then no T and tech connection. No ASA connection, no cable connection, no utilities at all. 
perhaps we should we need to get to that point i don't know but uh, just you, you know Mr. David, have, one of the one of the factors that we haven't discussed is that there's also a cost to doing it properly and that cost is exponentially more than if you just were to put up a house and have a place that you could sleep and that's that i think a part of the challenge is that people are willing to forego that that part of the safety in order to just have a roof over their heads how do we get to that to adjusting that part of it, to fixing that part of it, can we? Well, you, that, that's an that's an economic, a socio-economic question you're putting to me there. Sir. <laughs> yeah, and um, and and you are correct. But you know, for every one dollar spent on mitigation and preparedness, we save seven dollars in response and recovery. So there you go. All right, yeah, so it's yeah, about, it's about cha it. changing the mindset it. and changing the way we look at it, yeah? And I think yeah. that that is a very, a very good analogy that you put there um, because it would be more expensive to have to fix, to have to repair, rather than to do it properly the first time. I firmly agree. But here's a challenge. How do we fix the problem of the trees? Because, you know, trees falling is not necessarily, is it always human fault, human responsibility? And I anticipated that question too, sir. Now, many, many of the, 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 the trees that fell, uh, let me talk about the wind first. Eh? When we start to cut the trees down to put in the, 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 the houses, and we do this so indiscriminately, we, um, trees act as windbreakers. Social media was a buzz, and people were surprised that the wind was so violent winds are violent strong winds are violent you know so that um they and they were saying they didn't ex they, they didn't expect this well trees act as windbreakers okay and we have done quite a job at removing a lot of the the, 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 the trees and, and and developing communities and putting housing and that type of thing so if you do that and you move you remove quite a bit of the windbreak, then you're going to get violent winds coming towards you. So that's something we have to consider. You, where if you if, if you mess with nature, then you're going to um, there is a consequence there. Then you you you, you ask about your trees. Many of the communities, the, 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 the areas like Sandy Grandi and the Kuba Tabakit, you, 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 you're noticing that quite of the communities are some rural communities and somewhere there's a lot of, of, of foliage termites are a part of the whole problem for wooden homes and people don't think so but termites are subterranean and um, if you notice many of the we notice many of the trees that fell termite infested trees and the termite infested trees are around the homes so that the termites live in the trees and they and and, and they cause havoc with the trees so that this they, they, an, an easier slightest wind and this wind that took place on thursday was not it was a sharp heavy wind mm -hmm. and and it snapped many branches and the earth is already saturated so that uh, it, it, it gave a push to some of those trees some some of those trees which actually just toppled. So, hey, the trees, we, we have to start treating trees also. Trees must be treated as living things because they are living things. And uh, those in the parks and squares uh, of, 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 of the state, they need to be taken care of also along the highways. We just leave the trees there and we say, well, they are trees and they will grow but they will die also, and they need treatment. So it's a, it's a holistic effort needs to be needs to take place in, in dealing with trees and dealing with roofs. Yeah, Mr. David, and tell, me, how people can do. tell me something, Mr. David. Do you guys uh, at local government and rural development, do you guys work with the regional corporations to do those things, to trim the trees on the highway, to make sure, especially as we know we're coming into the rainy season and we get, it, I mean, hurricane season and all of that stuff. Uh, do you guys work with the regional corporations across the country to make sure that we have those public trees, the, the trees in public spaces taken care of? All right. The, now, the trees that are in parks and spares that belong to the regional corporations, we have oversight on those. 
the trees that are along the highways, they belong to the, the their oversight is, is, is in the hands of the Ministry of Works and Transport Highways Division. So they are the ones, um, and they're quite aware of all the trees. I, I, I know that that are along the, high, the, the, the highways. So they have a responsibility there. The regional corporations, they will deal with trees um, in their parks and in their squares and in their public spaces. And uh, there are teams that do that right. and, and, and treat with trees. But there needs to be a more holistic effort in right. dealing so, with the trees. But that's what I'm asking. Is there, is there, do you guys collaborate on it? I mean, at the end of the day, we all work in towards one goal, right? One Trinidad and Tobago. Is there a collaboration between these ministries that you all communicate and say, all right, we're making sure that everything is sorted out and just double check in to make sure they cut on the trees by so and so? That, that kind of communication happens? Yes, that happens. I mean, I was a disaster coordinator in Diego Martin, in the Diego Martin Regional Corporation for a number of years. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I knew when I was there, we, I would speak to the folks at um, highways and drainage, and we would talk about the trees and, and, and who is going to teach treat with this one and who's going to treat with the other one. And right. We would do that sort of collaboration. So that, yes, but I think it needs to be uh, more concerns must be placed on, 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 on the environment and trees. And whether the, the aspect of the termites, the, the termites, that needs a, a different level of, of, of intervention where, where we, 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 we have a department of this of, of the of the government that deals with all the trees i'm not talking just the ministry of work i'm not the ministry of agriculture you know something uh, and if it is the ministry of agriculture something really really uh, uh dealing with things like that so we need basically some kind of pest control department yeah all right. we, 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 we may need to do that all right, well, Mr. David, I want to thank you so much for joining us inside the Now Morning Show this morning and chatting about this. I hope that the people listening are able to, to take heed and do what you need to do to secure your house, please. That's Jerry David, the Senior Disastment, Disaster Management Coordinator at Local Government and Rural Development. Ladies, you see, I don't know how many... I find very often we tend to, to leave things like that up until the it's last too late. Last minute, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. too late. Since, since May, the, the ODPM have been telling us that this year is going to be rough. They told us it's going to be a, a rough, wet season and to batten down yeah. and to make sure and secure your premises and, and make sure things are safe. Um, have you guys been able to do that at home? Wow, rockers putting me on the spot. I am. <laughs> because, you know, we, we oftentimes talk about, yeah, and I realized yeah. it for myself just this yeah. weekend, I was like, you know, a lot of the things that we talk about and the safety measures that I tell them people to put in place, and I'm like looking around my house like, if I win pass here, exactly. real thing going yeah. flying, yeah. you know? And yeah. it's like, it made me have to take stock and say, all right, no, start home. Do something, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think yeah, you guys can do the same thing. Make sure you start around the house by you, clean up things, and then you can move out to the neighborhood and make sure that everything is in a gear and everything is safe. All right, let's take a quick break, and we come back, and we have a lot more in store for you right here. TTT, we live in for local. <laughs>